Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is one of my kind of monthly vlog updates, I kind of call them. So it's just a bunch of different updates of what I've been sewing or things that are happening, stuff like that. So I hope you enjoy it. So the first big development lately is that I got a new sewing machine. Um, so some of you might have seen the video last week. Um, basically, I bought a Faf Quilt Expression 720 and I'm just getting familiar with it and stuff. So I'm not doing a review of it just yet, but I will um, once I feel more comfortable with the machine. And if you're not sure why I kind of traded in and switched machines from the Bernina 770 to this one, then go and watch the video from last week. I'll link to it below or up there somewhere or something like that. So the next kind of update development that I'm super excited about, <laughs> which is that my five-year-old son um, finished his long-running uh, quilt UFO. Um, so I talked about this back in January when I was doing sort of whips and UFOs and this was his one. Um, so we had worked together on, um, sewing basically charm pack squares together. Hang on, I've got a frog in my throat. Um, with him pressing like the stop start button and adjusting the speed and picking, you know, the colors and what was going to go everywhere. So he was doing some sewing, but, oh, and he was like learning how to, um, you know, lift the presser foot and press needle down and the um, cut the threads and stuff like that. So I was super impressed with him when he was three, basically. And then, <laughs> and then he kind of just left him. I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, anyway, so we did the kids' stash buster quilts um, a couple of weeks ago. I had a video on that, which was my attempt to kind of reinvigorate him back into sewing. Um, so basically what he was doing was picking out fabrics and then I was sewing it together into kind of a random quilt that he was directing, which he really liked and then really liked the quilt. But then when he saw, I showed the boys that that video, cause they're kind of in it for, for a couple minutes or whatever. Um, so when I showed them that video, then he got more interested because they watch other people playing with toys on YouTube. <laughs> so anyway, they're into YouTube. So then they were on YouTube and then they were interested. Um, and then they asked to watch more quilt videos, but I didn't want to sit around watching videos of me <laughs> for obvious reasons. So uh, instead of showing them my videos, I put on um, some Missouri Star videos because like that's where you start, right? So, um, so we started doing that. And my oldest in particular, uh, really got into them. So his favorite, so the only ones he wants to watch are the triple play videos. So if you've never, if you somehow missed this, but um, so Jenny Doan runs the Missouri Star Quilt Company, super huge on YouTube, teach, probably taught most of us our first quilting if we didn't learn it in a class year, like decades ago. If we're like YouTube taught like me, it was probably her. Uh, anyway, she now has her daughter, Natalie, and her daughter-in-law, Misty, doing some videos with her sometimes. So there's one's called Triple Play, and that's where the three of them make their own quilts and like do a little tutorial based on different, so different versions of the same quilt block, essentially. Right. So these are the ones he really likes. <laughs> and he super, super got into watching them, picking his favorite, um, just really understood the format, I think, of that. Um, and so he wanted to do his own video, essentially, um, when we, and well, one, he said he wanted to finish his quilt based on, I think, based on watching that, you know, and two, he wanted to do a video of it. So, <laughs> so um, here is uh, his take on a Missouri Star triple play video, uh, showing you his finished first quilt ever. Um, this is my quilt. Yeah. I'll tell you what I call it. What'd you call it? Rainbow, rainbow, rainbow squares. Yeah. It's a nice big quilt. It is, isn't it? So to make it, you'll need one pink square, a purple square, a uh, a long big inks, inks, but look, uh, I'll also need to, and I also need a ruler, and a nut, so, and a long script, to a little 
a little squip, another medium squip, a long and a wide squip, some fabric, a bottom of a cat, some yellow stuff for the border. No, I don't want all this. Okay. It's too many. Should I take that away? Yeah. yeah. Hey. We, we need to start by cutting. Hey, no! Bit. I was going to get oh. through. Mummy? Yeah? Can you cut this? Right. You want me to cut that? Right. Okay. Right. Hang on. Yeah. Just cut there. Oh. Okay. There you go. I don't need this anymore. Okay. <laughs> Just ah! making me cut things. Okay. Right, got it. Now, you have to sew this together with this piece, Mommy. This ready. So she can cut. Where's he going? Now I need you to cut Ooh. this. What, what am I doing? Okay. Ah! Right. I gotta go around this way, sweetheart, because I'm left handed. Okay. There you go. And one more. This time, just a little bit bigger. Okay. And, and then you need to. You don't need this anymore. You don't need that one. Okay, then what do I need to do? One more. Now you need to cut off the next eggs. Alright. What am I doing? Cutting this. Cutting this, okay. Like mm. Okay, then what? And then... Oh. What are we doing with all these strips? Look my way. Is what this you? What are we doing with these? Uh, we, we, now I need mm. to just sew these together oh. with this. Okay, like what? One on, on either the, end? On the back. On the back? What do you mean on the back? I mean, like... On each on the edge. edge. On the edge, okay. Uh -huh. On each uh -oh. edge. On each end, okay, right. Take off a bit and put some the people the backing. Okay. This is the backing. That's it, yeah. Ooh. It's a beautiful view. <laughs> right. Now can you cut that bit? Can you cut this way? Cut this way. Nope. No. On the other side. Well, that's a very small bit. Can't really get, can I do it a little bigger so at least yeah. we can get a seam in it? Right. There you go. Hey. 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 What am I doing? Cut that, yeah. ah. Okay, move your fingers. You trying to make these line up? Is that what you're trying to do? take you to finish your quilt about uh three four years two years wasn't it two years. so um, you start how old were you when you started three and how old are you now what five cool what made you choose the colors because um, you chose all the colors and where they went didn't you Oop. because i just wanted it to seem out pretty I seem out pretty isn't it yes are you happy with that yeah you on your bed Cool. So, Mummy, can you just stand up? Stand up and hold it back. Okay, let's, let's angle this up a bit. Oop. Okay. Am I holding it like this? Yeah. Okay. Nice and flat. Nice and flat. This block fits in 
Right over here. Oh, uh, yeah. So it, it does. It doesn't have the sticks. Yeah. Now, it's on to you, Mummy. On to me, yeah. So as well as watching the Missouri Star videos, we also watched um, a lot of uh, sewing mastery videos. I linked them in my last video and I'll link below as well, um, showing me basically how to use my new sewing machine. So the, the woman, Sarah, there has like, um, you know, episode after episode, it was short little things instructing you on different bits of different machines. And she had one on my new machine. So anyway, um, the, the boys kind of sat through some of those videos as well. And one of the ones that my son saw was the one on the stitch creator. So in my new machine, you can kind of, you can sequence different stitches, decorative stitches or normal stitches, but you can also go in and kind of move the stitch points and kind of make your own stitch. So he got into the idea of that. And we had a morning together playing on the, the screen, <laughs> the sewing machine essentially <clears throat> coming up with what was basically a stitch sequence, but he did move a few of the, like he took the stylus thing and moved a few of the stitch points to different random places. Um, so he's he's created his own stitch. And so I used that to quilt his quilt. We sort of put, he, he did a bunch of them and we kind of squished them all together and made one long sequence that repeats. Um, so that's, that's what his quilt is quilted with. So, and he really liked that part of it. Um, he also really liked directing me what to do, as you could see. I think that was part of the format of the video is that he really liked. Because there's one of them who presses, one of them who uh, sews, and one of them who explains. So that's the that's the format that he, he really liked. So this was a collaboration. He pieced um, the squares, picked all that out, and then he directed me as far as the border and the backing and the and obviously he created his stitch for the quilting but he didn't stay up late actually quilting it but anyway <laughs> um baby steps but he has um decided he wants to use my older Janome so that's the one we started with when he was three and so he knows how to work that a bit better than the new one so we set it up across from my machine and he likes to use it standing up so he's uh he's been practicing and adding to his blocks he's got a box with his own fabric and stuff in and he's been adding to it every day um for the last week or so who knows how long it'll last but anyways i'm pleased for now so another thing that i was really excited about that happened last month i think or earlier this month earlier this month i think it was like first of july i think it was on canada today um, basically I met a subscriber for a coffee. <laughs> so Nancy from Maryland was on vacation in Scotland and she had messaged me a while ago and said, I'm going to be in Scotland in June. Um, do you want to meet up for coffee? And I'd seen her, you know, commenting on the videos loads. So I was like, sure. Um, and then I thought maybe she'd forgotten about it because I didn't hear from her. And then all of a sudden she messaged and said, Oh, I'm I'm going to be in town at this date and this time. Can we meet up? So anyway, we found a spot to meet up near a fabric store that she was going to. And I met with her and her friend and we had a really good chat. And it was like talking to somebody who you already know, even though, you know, she knew me from the videos and I knew her from some comments. But like we just had obviously the quilting in common and all of that. So it was it was really cool. Um, and it's just it was just kind of brought to life the kind of community that I feel from you guys when when you're like responding to me and we're you know having a conversation on here so it was really cool and she let me take a selfie so this was us here just outside the coffee shop next thing I wanted to show you was a qu uh, quilt by Karen uh, so she's here in the UK and she sent me this by email um, and it's basically something she's made on the back of my modern scrap quilt video so if you haven't seen that um, I'll put the link in the description and somewhere up above, hopefully, but I think she did a great job. I think it looks so cool. So I asked her if I could share it and she said I could. So there it is. If you've got a quilt um, that you've made or a project that you've made based on one of my tutorials, I would love to see it and maybe share it. Um, so you can send me an email at hello at scrapfabriclove.com and I'd love to have a look. So I had another subscriber this past month who emailed me kind of out of the blue uh, Carrie from Wales and she had a bunch of scraps like leftover fabric and stuff and she'd already asked all of her quilting pals if they wanted them and nobody did 
God. So anyway, she messaged me and she said she wanted to send them to me. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to turn it down, but, um, but I, you know, I did, I felt a bit guilty because I've got lots of fabric and I'm not, you know, I, I'm all constantly buying fabric on eBay myself. But, um, anyway, she said she literally had nowhere else to give it to and she didn't want it to go to waste. So she sent it to me and I even was trying to get her to let me pay the postage and she wouldn't let me. It was amazing. So I'm going to show you this box that she sent me. It was so cool. Uh, she even color coordinated the scraps for me. I mean, a woman after my own heart. You guys know how I feel about color coordinating and scraps. It's like, it, it's what I do. <laughs> so anyway, um, I've already had loads of fun sorting this and putting it in with my stash and um, some of the stuff has already made its way into a quilt that I'm going to show you in a few weeks. So yeah, um, thank you so much, Carrie. This was amazing. And let's, uh, let's have a look at what she said. So this is the box. I've sped this up a bit because I was crinkling a bit, taking all these packages out. Um, but anyway, they're basically a bunch of color coordinated bags of fabric. Now she's called these scraps. Um, some of them are quite large by my standards, <laughs> like this one here. I'm not sure I would call that a scrap. I mean, I guess it's a scrap if it's left over from something else. But for me, that's a huge piece of fabric, almost like a layer cake piece. And there was loads of bigger piece, small strips and loads of bigger things, which just goes to show you like one person's, you know, one person's trash or one person's scraps is another person's treasure. I had so much fun looking through all of these little bits and pieces. I have sped it up a little bit just because the video is getting so long, but you can just see like, this is just one bag that I'm going through here. And there's just so much that you do with all of that. Um, blues as well in the blues there were some really big pieces like these these um not those little ones but just underneath my hands there are those big blue pieces they're fairly big um so I did uh I have been sorting things into different areas of my um fabric stash depending on the size they are and stuff like that but um but like that yellow piece is really big that actually that yellow piece um was in the border of, of the, my son's quilt that you just saw actually. So that's already been used that yellow. <laughs> and I think maybe another bit of yellow, I can't remember. Uh, and anyway, so I was just going through all of this and just so pleased that I said, yes, cause I'm going to have so much fun with all this fabric. Um, and yeah. Oh, and my, my, my son's going to like that one too, cause it's space themed that blue. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show you, uh, a range of what was in it. I won't open everything, but um, there's uh, quite a bit in there. And there's another bit that was in another um, another one of the bags, I think in the brown or the black and gray bag that I've used for another quilt as well already. I mean, like some of these, this yellow, like that's big. So I, yeah, I think that's some of the yellow also that we used in the border. The, the whole border might've cut mostly, I think I pulled a couple things out of my stash, but most of that yellow border, which was a, a range of different, yellows came from from Carrie's gift here and that green I mean that I don't know if Carrie was making scrubs or something but there's loads that's what it feels like that material and there's loads of it um and just yeah just a treasure of fabric basically that arrived in the post <laughs> and it was just amazing um it took me it took me a while to go through and have a look at all um so yeah, I'll just speed through the last bits of this. I just wanted you to see some of the cool prints and different things. Cause like, that's the fun thing about scraps because, you know, sometimes you only really want a little bit of something to just add a bit of variety and you don't actually need, you know, a whole fat quarter or whatever. So, um, yeah, and you can always use like, and blacks and neutrals, you can always use that in a background in a scrappy way. So I'm going to definitely be using all of this, I think, um, so yeah, super cool. So while Carrie's gift was so amazing and so unexpected, this is not an invitation for you guys to all try and send me your scraps, okay? I do uh, do a good job of hoarding fabric on my own. Uh, I just felt like I couldn't let this particular batch go to waste, but um, I'm sure you can find quilting friends near you um, who would love to sew with your scraps. If you're not in a guild already, um, maybe join one. There's usually at least one scrappy quilter in there. Um, I don't know how there isn't one in Carrie's, but anyway. Uh, so hopefully if you've got scraps that you don't know what to do with one, you can watch, you know, some of the tutorials and find something for you to do with them. 
um, but two, hopefully you can find someone locally who would love to take them off your hands. So linking back to the new sewing machine, um, it's kind of, it's kind of a segue. Um, when I was watching all the sewing mastery videos about my machine, Sarah on the channel was recommending Isacord embroidery thread for quilting. And then I was kind of Googling that and I saw that Leah Day was recommending that as well. Um, it like causes less lint and it comes in loads of bright colors and it's really nice. Anyway, so I, I think I bought one and tried it. Yeah, I bought one somewhere, Amazon or something, uh, and tried it and I liked it. And so then I went on eBay, as I do, um, <laughs> and I somehow found this woman who was selling a great big box of Isacord thread and a few other kind of embroidery threads. Um, I think she was asking for 80 pounds and I think I offered 60 or something like that. And she, anyway, or maybe I offered 50 and she then asked me for 60 or something like that. You know, you can do bids and offers, make an, it's not just the bidding on eBay, it's also sometimes you can make an offer anyway. So I ended up paying 60 pounds plus postage. Um, so 60 pounds UK money. And uh, I know there's a thing about not buying used thread, but it just, it didn't, I mean, had it, I'm gonna say it didn't look that old on the photo on eBay, <laughs> but it could be old, I don't know. So I took a chance. I took a chance that it wasn't that old essentially. So uh, here is my thread haul. I have used it for a few projects. It seems okay. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I have replaced, so I'm not usually a thread snob. Um, I have used Coats Moon quite a bit um, on my previous machines and just because it's so much cheaper than Aurifil and stuff. But when I was having all those problems with the Bernina, uh, previously I did switch to using Aurifil for piecing and I think I was using it for quilting, but I wasn't super in love with it for quilting. So then when I got this recommendation and now I have all this thread, um, I've been using that uh, for quilting and the Aurifil for piecing. And so now I'm selling the Coats Moon on eBay. <laughs> so now I've got a big box of all my old thread uh, and people are bidding on it. It's not sold, it's not, the auction's not finished yet, but people are bidding on it. So someone's gonna buy that. So that'll be in the, in a future video. Um, so I'll tell you about it right now, actually, I'm gonna be doing a new series. So um, what's coming up on the channel in the next few weeks is something I've been busy with lately. It's a summer sort out that I've been doing. So I'm gonna do a series. Um, so basically I've been reorganizing and resorting out my sewing room. I've got a couple videos on the channel of like big sewing makeovers. This isn't that. I haven't bought any new furniture or like really changed how things look but really all that much. Um, it, but I have, I did make a huge mess as I normally do, taking everything off of the shelves and then finding a better place to put it back. That It was that kind of thing. So I've done a big summer sort out um, that involves a bit of destashing. Yes, I know. I just talked about <laughs> getting new fabric and new thread, but um, I, you know, it was partially I needed to fit that in. And so what was going to come out um, that I wasn't using really. So the first video is going to be all about sorting, deciding what I'm keeping, what I'm not keeping and how to reorganize it. Second one is going to be about how to, how I've been selling some of the stuff that I didn't think I would use. Um, so I'll give you some tips about how to sell your own fabrics or notions or bits and pieces and things like that. And then the third one is some stash buster projects that I've been doing. So I've been doing some stash buster quilts for charity, as well as some other smaller projects um, to just kind of try and use up the fabric that maybe doesn't totally light me on fire, um, but I didn't really want to sell it or I didn't think anyone else would buy it or something. You know, I, I, had, a, I had a kind of a system of kind of, this is what's gonna get sold and this I feel like I should do something with. So if I had a color coordinated group of stuff, but a lot of it was scraps and harder to list, then I was um, making stuff with that. So anyway, so there's gonna be those three coming up. I'm super happy with how my sewing room is looking and liking my new system, but you know me, <laughs> I will make a mess of it before long and do it all again. But uh, hopefully you'll enjoy these videos coming up. Uh, so whatever happened to the weight loss quilt? <laughs> well, here's what happened. So I should have kept it to a six month thing, right? Because I was going really well. I'd lost about 30 pounds um, and I was almost at the six month thing. So I could have finished the quilt and said, look, it worked, I lost 30 pounds. But I wasn't quite at the weight I wanted to be at. 
So I wanted to keep it going. But then I was kind of off the wagon, on the wagon, off the wagon, on the wagon with the exercise stuff. Um, and now we're in July, which is a tough month for me in general. There's a lot of um, death anniversaries um, in my family that happen in July. And as much as I try and d distract myself with sewing and stuff like that, it always hits me. Without fail, it hits me. So I'm gonna be kind of kind to myself um, around this month. And the weight loss quilt's kind of going on summer hiatus, <laughs> essentially. So I'm not really doing anything with it, despite having said I was back on track with it a couple weeks ago or whenever that was. Um, sorry. <laughs> so I will get back to it. Um, I don't like to kind of leave things unfinished. Um, so I will get back to it when I feel ready to do that, hopefully August or September. And I will let you know. Um, my aim now is to definitely last chance like have it finished by december whether i've lost the weight or not the quilt will be done and i will stop talking about this <laughs> essentially but um yeah so it's not dead but it's taken a summer break so sorry if that's um disappointing for anybody who's been following along but i know from the facebook group which also i'm sorry has not been as active as i meant for it to be but that's because i was so off and on the whole thing um but i have seen a couple people in there have kind of done the six months and they've finished and they've got some gorgeous quilt tops. So um, yeah, even though I didn't finish mine, some people have. So well done to you if you have. Um, and thanks for joining in. Um, it was it was great to not be doing it alone. Uh, and uh, I hope to get back to doing it with those of you who are still doing it um, before too long. So this was kind of a long one. Lots of updates, lots of silliness. I <laughs> um, uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you do like videos like this and you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought, and I hope to see you again. Thanks so much for spending time with me. Bye.